larynx. So what do we know about larynx? Yes, it is organ of respiration and organ of phonation. What else we should know? We should know what is the location of larynx, what is its extent. To know its extent, let us draw a rough diagram, nose behind nasal cavity and this is hot palate which separates the nasal cavity from oral cavity. This is tongue, the most posterior part of tongue forms a depression called vallecula then you have a leaf shaped structure epiglottis which forms the inlet of our windpipe yes you know it is present in the midline of neck what is its extent it extends from root of the tongue to the trachea trachea you can very well differentiate it with the presence of tracheal rings extends from root of tongue to the trachea now what is the vertebral extent of larynx for that let me draw the cervical vertebra What is that projection you are seeing in the first vertebra I have drawn is yes, that is odontoid process of dense which means that is your second cervical vertebra then comes C3, C4, 5, 6 and 7. Now you can see larynx extends from third cervical vertebra to the sixth cervical vertebra. So what is the extent? Vertebral extent is C3 to C6. You should know in children and in adult females it is a little higher. What is behind this larynx? You have two tibular structure in the neck. Anteriorly you have larynx, posteriorly of course pharynx. Just know pharynx you have three parts. Behind the nasal cavity is nasopharynx, oral is oropharynx and behind your larynx is laryngopharynx. Let us talk about uh, just a very few point about epiglottis, histology of epiglottis. Just know it is made up of elastic cartilage. And what about the lining epithelium? Yes, it has different lining on the upper surface and the lower surface. One of the reason is uh, the surface which comes in contact with the food. The bolus runs over the dorsum of tongue over the epiglottis. When it runs over the epiglottis, the lid closes your laryngeal inlet and the bolus falls into the pharynx then esophagus. So the surface which comes in contact with the food stress should be lined with stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium on the under surface with the typical respiratory epithelium which is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar or epithelium now coming to our proper skeletal framework of larynx what is larynx actually made up of it is mainly made up of cartilages how many cartilages are there in larynx? You have 9 cartilages. Easy to remember. 3 paired and 3 unpaired. That's it. So let us 
talk in detail about these three paired and three unpaired cartilages to know that let me draw a rough diagram of larynx should know the anterior and posterior side of larynx to get orientation now I am going to draw three unpaired cartilages what is this leaf shaped structure with pointing in downwards and broad end upwards is of course epiglottis below that you have thyroid cartilage and below that you have cricoid cartilage this cricoid I have to draw it on the posterior side of larynx also that's because it is like a circle it is like a ring which encircles your larynx what is the difference anteriorly it is very narrow like an arch but posteriorly it is broad like a lamina which extends up to behind your thyroid cartilage so now you know the three unpaired cartilages they are epiglottis thyroid and cricoid let's move on to three paired cartilages one of the three uh, paired cartilages is your pyramidal shaped arytenoid cartilage what is that anterior smaller projection that is your ocal process just above your cricoid lamina and above that arytenoid you have two nodular shaped structure called corniculate and cuneiform nothing much to talk about corniculate and cuneiform if you are interested you can know the other names corniculate is santorini cuneiform is rusberg santorini where else you have heard of it yes of course other name of accessory pancreatic duct rusberg anywhere else yes you have rusberg nerve what is Risberg nerve? It is nervous intermediate of facial nerve, the sensory part. You have Risberg ligament. What is it? Your posterior menisco femoral ligament in knee joint. Then you have Risberg ganglia. What is it? It is a superficial cardiac plex uh, plexus present beneath your arch of iota okay coming back to our topic let us move on to laryngeal inlet what are the boundaries of laryngeal inlet So what is the anterior structure of larynx, epiglottis, posteriorly you have two pyramidal shaped retinoid cartilage and between them we have interaretinoid fold. What is the connection, what are the lateral boundaries of inlet, yes it is array epiglotticus. This is your interarytenoid. So now tell me the boundaries of laryngeal inlet anteriorly epiglottis, posteriorly, to be specific, it is interarytenoid on either side, array epiglottic fold. Now, which structure opens your laryngeal inlet? 
yes to open that inlet something has to pull away so the structure which is attached between thyroid and epiglottis is thyroepiglotticus this thyroepiglotticus is the opening muscle of laryngeal inlet which muscle closes the laryngeal inlet of course it is ara epiglotticus when this contracts the epiglottis closes the larynx okay now we know some idea about laryngeal inlet let us move on to other muscles i'm going to discuss only few important muscles over here is few muscles of larynx anteriorly see between the thyroid and cricoid is cricothyroid muscle what is the speciality what we should remember about this cricothyroid just remember it is the tensor of vocal cord to know few more muscles let me draw the posterior view of larynx again you have epiglottis to arytenoid and lamina of cricoid what is between the two arytenoid cartilage that is transverse arytenoid muscle and you have one cruciform shaped muscle which is connecting apex of one arytenoid to the base of other and similarly other one that is called oblique arytenoid muscle you should know when these muscles contract it brings your both the arytenoid towards the midline that is this is the muscle which causes adduction of vocal cords when the arytenoid moves the vocal cord moves because the vocal cords are attached to the vocal process of arytenoid cartilage now what is this muscle which takes attachment between lamina and arytenoid this is the important muscle of larynx posterior between cricoid and arytenoid crico arytenoid muscle this posterior crico arytenoid muscle when it contracts what happens it pulls your two arytenoids away from each other and this is the only muscle which causes abduction of vocal cord and hence it is called safety muscle of larynx please remember safety muscle of larynx is your posterior crico arytenoid now let me draw vocal cord you should know anteriorly it is attached to thyroid lamina in the midline angulation posteriorly to the vocal process of arytenoid cartilage i have drawn two folds the upper fold is called vestibular fold it is otherwise called false vocal cord the lower one is vocal fold and it is called true vocal fold what how this vestibular and vocal folds are actually formed uh, when you see you have a membrane extending from the epiglottis to the arytenoid and this membrane lower border thickens to form your vestibular fold what is this membrane called as quadrate membrane so vestibular fold is nothing but the lower thickening of your quadrate membrane similarly likewise you have from the cricoid cartilage you have crico vocal membrane the upper part of the crico vocal membrane 
thickens to form your vocal fold that is called true vocal cord okay now let us move on to our rough model you can make this model in a few minutes maximum 2 to 3 minutes just take a piece of paper make a cone out of it now you have to cut the lower part of the cone yes that's it you got your larynx model this is your tibialo structure and you can see the proper elevation like the laryngeal inlet and lower down you have normal tibialo structure which continues as trachea now i'm going to make the cartilages of larynx so this will be our thyroid cartilage yes you can see the thyroid cartilage present in the anterior wall of larynx i am going to do some alterations to bring two quadrilateral lamina on either side see that is for the thyroid notch which separates your right and left lamina in the upper part okay this more or less mimics our anterior view of thyroid cartilage see you have right lamina and left lamina anteriorly it is approached at the midline to form the prominence collaryngeal prominence which is our adam's apple you should know this angulation is 90 degree in males 120 degree in females and posterior border is free i haven't made the cornua you have cornua on both the ends now below the thyroid is our cricoid so i'm going to draw cricoid both anteriorly and posteriorly you already know anteriorly it is narrow like an arch posteriorly it is broader which reaches up to the thyroid cartilage so now we have made two unpaired cartilages thyroid and cricoid what is left yes epiglottis this i have cut the extra part of uh, projection above the cricoid lamina okay let's draw the epiglottis yeah keep in mind the lower end should be pointed upper end is broad now cut the rest of the portion from the epiglottis so now we are drawing the paired cartilages our pyramidal shape retinoid above the lamina of cricoid cartilage at its apex you know you have two pairs of nodules called corniculate and cuneiform now you have anterior and posterior boundary of laryngeal inlet now this is just to make the lateral boundaries of laryngeal inlet which is from the epiglottis to the retinoid called as a epiglottic fold on either side that's my daughter's toy <laughs> yeah that is the dorsum of tongue when the bolus strikes your upper surface of epiglottis it closes your laryngeal inlet and prevents the foot from falling inside and the bolus falls into the pharynx that is why you should not talk while eating now you can see the boundaries of laryngeal inlet 
when there are epiglottis contracts it closes your laryngeal inlet when thyro epiglottis contracts it opens your laryngeal inlet okay now shall we draw few more muscles only 2 to 3 muscles yes this is our crico thyroid between cricoid and thyroid you should know that is the only muscle supplied by external laryngeal nerve okay now you have you got two points regarding cricothyroid tensor of focal cord supplied by external laryngeal nerve fine what is this muscle transverse arytenoid and this cruciformis oblique arytenoid you should know it forms adduction of focal cord this our main important muscle posterior cricoarytenoid causes abduction safety muscle of larynx that's it thank you